Hello guys, Kevin Karakara here. Welcome back to another video. And today in this video, we will be talking about our project. Yes, the project of the basic uh, series. We are done with the basic series. And if you haven't checked it out yet, you can check it on my YouTube channel. You will find a Python 3 playlist. So it is a full Python 3 series of the Python basics. And with the knowledge that we gain from that uh, basic series, we will develop a project. And we have already seen that what we want to develop and how we will look. So in this video, we will develop our birthday database. So let's directly start with the coding. Before that, let's roll the intro. ready and let's start so here I have my machine and in PyCharm I have created a new project that as we can see here this is the folder I have named it as basic project uh, the name of the project is basic project and in that I have created a new Python file uh, and I have named it as birthday underscore db so you can create that as well just to save the time I have already did, uh, did it so let's start with the coding so we have seen the project that we will insert some record and then we will fetch some record and it is working like a database right but as we discussed we haven't learned database connection in python 3 as of now so how we will use this so in this we won't connect it to any database yes in the future once we learn the database we can surely upgrade this project with the database but for this project we will be using the concept of dictionaries now again what are dictionaries that we have learned dictionaries exist in uh, key and value pairs right and in this this that is our requirement right our uh, there will be one name and there will be one birthday and if we want a birthday then we will fetch it or uh, fetch it with the name so your uh, dictionary will be our absolute choice for it so your the name will be the key and the values will be the birthday so for that first let's create a dictionary let's name it as birthday and how to create a dictionary using this curly braces we have learned that in the series as well right now uh, we have seen that there is a big menu right uh, 1 2 3 and 4 so for that what we will have to do is we will have to write 4 or 5 print statements to print that menu so rather than writing so uh, 4 or 5 print statements what we will do is we will use multi line strings now what are multi line strings the multi uh, we have learned that if you want what if we want to write multiple lines of the content we can uh, write it using the triple quotes so like uh, let's use that technique here just to save our time and just to make our code look better so here we will have a menu this is a variable in which we will store the multiple string and here we will have our multiple string so let's write here one view birthday okay pi not po second we have fetch all the records third we have is add birthday and the last one was the option to edit later in the stage once we are done with this project surely you can add some more menus accordingly with the knowledge that you have else let's uh, go with this for now the, just the four options and here we will go with exit and in the future we will surely enhance it with the database as well so we have our menu ready now we have seen in the project that once we are done with a single operation rather it be fetching or inserting the menu was uh, it was uh, the application was asking us to, uh, that menu again so how it was happening remember we learned something called as while loop so and this is iterating a task right the menu was coming again and again that we, that means it was a repeated it was a repeating task that means we want to iterate thus we will use a loop here and the appropriate loop here will be while loop because we don't know that how many times the user want to use that application in for loop we will need a uh, need some range right but here we don't know so here what we will do is we will use the while loop so let's have while here and here we will have true that unless and until user quits this condition is gonna remain true right once the user uh, pay, uh, clicks on exit what we will do is we will make the condition false and if the condition is false the, the condition will be checked that while true no it is not true because the if the user has uh, entered the choice for the condition will become false thus the loop will be break and the application will stop so this is the process how we want to do so here right now we will have your while true and first we will print our heading that we had that is 
birthday database okay this is our heading and then we have our menu so now rather than writing four print statements what we can do is we can just directly print the menu variable okay so now what we want to do is we want to take the input from the user that please enter your choice that what you want to do so for that we will need to create a variable so let's create a variable uh, name it as choice and what we will do is int we understand that if we want integer as input we need to type cast it so int input enter your choice so we have here that int input enter your choice what we next want to do is we will have uh, decision making that is we need to check whether if uh, the choice is equal equals to 1 what we have to do and if it is equal to 2 what we need to do so here we will use if and else remember that if and else are used to check some conditions and then uh, execute accordingly so here we will have four uh, if conditions okay not if but if and at if and then going on to the else so let's have the first one that if choice is equal equals to 1 again why equal equal to because equal equal to is used to compare uh, the two values whereas a uh, single equal in programming is used to assign some value and here we want to compare that's why we have this now uh, if the choice is 1 and what our first is in the menu that 1 is for view birthday so we need to fetch the birthday but there can be possibilities that if the user want to fetch some birthday and if previously or uh, initially if we don't have any data in the database then what should uh, we will do so we need to handle that as well right so for that first we need to check that whether uh, the dictionary is empty or not so what we will do is we will have an nested if because we want to check something again so what we will have is length and here we will have is our dictionary that is named birthday dot keys not keyword okay keys and this will be equal equals to zero if the length is zero that means the dictionary is empty so here we can print that no records in the list or you can write it as that the record list is empty uh, okay so no records in the list and here then we will have an else condition for that that if already there is data then we will fetch it so uh, let's have an else condition so else and what we will be doing here is uh, if we have a else condition what we will do is we will ask our user that please enter the name for whom you want to find uh, the birthday right so here what we will do is else then name is equals to input again it is in string so we don't need to do any type typecasting and here enter the name to find their birthday right so this is our name and then we have our name so we need to fetch the record in there so what we will do is we will have your another variable answer that will be equal to birthday and we have seen that if we have a key and if we want to fetch the value then we have a method called as get so birthday dot get and we will pass the key inside so that is name so this name will be the key and let's say that if that key does not exist that what we will do then again will we will have to check right but rather than uh, using another if else what we will do that we have a technique and this get parameter takes a, this get method takes an optional parameter that if this key is not uh, uh, there in the dictionary we can uh, print some uh, print some value that or print some message that that key is not there right so what we will do is we will pass that optional parameter and what we will write is no record found okay so no record found so we are done with this no record found and uh, if the record is found we will directly print answer so we are done with this now let's go for the second condition get is fetch all the records so let's go for it so now here we have else so elif choice is equal equals to 2 if choice is 2 again we need to check that whether there is something in the dictionary or not so let's copy and just paste it to save a bit of our time okay else what we will do is we now we understand that if there are records in dictionary and we need to fetch one by one each record so we need to iterate right because we want to fetch one record then again we want to fetch another record we want to fetch them one by one so again it is a looping task so here we will need a loop so here we can use the for loop right because we know the range what will be the range the length of the dictionary so what we will do is for i in birthday dot now we want keys and values both we have seen that we have keys method to fetch the keys and values method to fetch the values but we have here both right so 
how to fetch both so there is a method called as items yes we haven't seen this method and i have been uh, telling you guys since the starting that also keep reading the documentation side by side because there are a lot of methods available for each object or each model so it is not possible for us as an instructor to cover each and every uh, 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 method so the important ones or the methods that are used we will surely cover that uh, and rest you have to read the documentation so here the another is for i in budget or items and we discuss that items will return us both key and value so what we will do is just your print and just print i so it will print directly the this key and value right so until everything is going smooth and right now what is the next thing next thing is add birthday so to add birthday again we will need another elif condition so let's have it elif not else elif choice is equal equals to 3 and if the choice is equals to 3 we need to take the input from the user right what we need to take the input the name and the birthday so let's have again a variable name the name is equals to input enter the name you want to add or you can have any other customized message okay enter the name you want to add and then we will have birth date so for that we have another variable then here let's keep it as string only so input enter there birth date okay now we have both so what we need to do is we have the we have taken key as an input and we have also taken value as an input so what we need to do is now we need to uh, add that into the dictionary so we can use the update method as we have seen or what we can do is here we can directly update it from here only we have the dictionary and we will pass the key name as uh, key as the name and if it is not there it will be added and we will uh, have your date so this will become its value right so simple so it will uh, go to the birthday dictionary create a key of name now what is the name name is a variable and uh, will uh, save the va uh, value for that key as the date that will be entered so this is our and what then we can do is print record add it okay again a customized message and we now we have our last condition to check now what was our last that we want to exit so let's have it lf choice is equal equals to 4 then what we need to do is we need to break the loop and what this break will do that it will uh, break the loop that means the condition that we were checking that while true now it will become false then if, if it is false then the loop will never get executed and the, we will come out of the loop so if choice is equal equals to 4 break and again we need to add an else condition right because uh, if we have if and else we need to have else so what we will have in else is print invalid choice please try again and we need to check this also right that uh, we have the options of 1 2 3 and 4 but if the user uh, presses anything else that is 5 6 or something then we need to handle that gracefully as well so hopefully i think we are done with our project first one so it seems appropriate so let's try and run and wish that we don't get any errors so and right again don't be afraid of errors errors are part of programming let's hope that we don't get any errors and okay so it is running we have got our title we have got our menu so let's check to view birthday okay dict object has no key okay so it is giving us some error so we need to check it okay the method name is not key but keys right birthday dot keys and birthday dot values Matlab that is dictionary dot keys and dictionary dot values so let's stop and run that again and happens sometimes happens you will get such small errors so let's have our choice as one and record list is empty and again we will get an error because what because that we copied this and directly pasted it in the second one so again we need, need to make it here keys as well so let's have run this again stop and rerun yes and here we can see that our one worked absolutely fine so let's directly check for two now it is also working fine no records in the list now let's add something so let's have the name as john birthday as 12th feb okay 12th feb 1985 and yes record added so now let's fetch the record first one using one we will pass the name as john and we have got the birthday 
now let's fetch all the records that are in the database right now we know that there is only one single record but still uh, for just the testing purpose let's have it so here we have choice 2 so it has fetched us okay so this is how the items method work and we are done with all these things so now let's just exit and break the loop and the process exit uh, process will uh, uh, finish with exit code 0 that means our code is working absolutely fine and we are done with our first project in this basic series so I hope you guys enjoyed this this was something new we uh, developed something from scratch and yes I know this is just a menu based project but not every time you will uh, you will develop something that will have a user interface right in the industry you will have to develop the projects of this kind only that will work on terminal and later that are integrated with some front end or some other things so that's it for this video let's catch up in another one another one where we will be doing our another project